that's next week. Hamid, we're going to do this again sometime soon. I would really love to see you do it next year. And I would really hope that she's not here. But for some people, defeat is just motivation. You told me off air that um, you came back this time for revenge. <laughs> this was vengeance for you. I expected that he was going to come back with fire. Mm. Last week, he said, <laughs> Half a year later, he came back even more impressive. Have you seen these Tito parks in Lagos nowadays? They're deplorable. Then I saw any health hazard everyone to come across. He broke his quarterfinal jinx. Asu only wants to increase the money that is coming to the pockets of its lecturers. That is the reason why they're also avoiding the IPPIS scheme. And lived up to his billing as the number one seed. In countries like Nigeria, where about half the population only ends around one dollar a day. How do children want to support their parents when they can barely support themselves? Esther Bewaji has never tasted defeat. Who can stop this Esther? In her first tournament, she's the highest scorer so far. During the 2015 elections, when the candidates for Harry complained about the prices of denomination the nomination funds, the then APC chairman, John Oyeku, said that it was a tactic employed to separate the men from boys. And she has upset two higher seats. First, the number three. Even after being given federal bailouts, many of these state governors claim to be using the money for infrastructure development. And then, the number two. It's two thirds of the world population have abolished the death penalty, yet with five countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and some states in the U.S. in two practices. But to be number one, she has to beat the number one. Only one of them can win one million naira. Can Esther get another upset? Some people might talk about how cruel and unusual punishment are not supposed to be inflicted. But like I've already said before, the death penalty is being carried out in non-brutal or torturous ways. Can Hamid outscore her points record? Another point we need to realize is that it is weakening Nigeria's economy. When ASU goes on strike, universities will now be remaining dormant. Who has what it takes to be one winner, one million naira? Join me, Sandra Ezekwesili, on Thursday at 4 p.m. as we crown the next I Beg to Differ champion. This debate is supported by ULESSON, RLG Communications, and obiwizi.com. It's time. The past three weeks have all led to this. It's the final of the I Beg to Differ debate tournament. Only two debaters are left standing. And in the next hour, they will debate each other twice until we are left with one winner, one million naira. I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator, and I Beg to Differ would not have been possible without our partners. So thank you so much to ULESSON, uh, who is our prize sponsor. ULESSON writing the check that you're going to go home with today, whoever wins uh, here this evening. They run the ULESSON Coding School, which teaches children how to code. And in addition to the one million naira cash prize, our winner will get access to the ULESSON Coding School. Uh, ULESSON provides um, uh fun learning uh, apps for children in primary and secondary school. Now, away from the one million naira and the coding school, uh, coding lessons that the winner will get, he or she will also get a laptop from obiwizi.com. Obiwizi provides new and good as new um, devices, all of them under warranty. And you can find all of this at obiwizi.com. Both finalists will get prizes from RLG. RLG is a Nigerian original equipment manufacturer based in Elisha. That's in Oshun State. They manufacture laptops, desktop computers, decoders, smart electric meters, power banks, and the tablets that these children will go home with. Now, before I introduce the contestants, let me properly introduce, introduce our panel of judges. My first judge is the voice of the news, here on Nigeria Info. Judge Vaughn Ohaifo, welcome to I Beg to Differ. Thank you, Sandra. Our second judge is joining us virtually from the United Kingdom. He's a clinical psychologist, Dr. Ndoka Onyebuchi. Welcome to I Beg to Differ. Our third judge is a product lead at uh, Founders Factory Africa, a venture capital firm and venture studio. Chief Judge Andy Oboforibo, welcome to I Beg to Defer. <laughs> it's a running gag that he's a chief judge because he's a chief. Um, uh, now that you've met the judges, Lagos, don't forget, we're streaming live on Facebook and we're streaming live on YouTube. Do yourself a favor and watch these kids. Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. 
Let's debate. Our first debater is a 14-year-old SS2 student at Silver Sands Hall School, Lecky. In the round of 16, she told us that party nomination forms are not too expensive. In the quarterfinals, she explained why government cannot be prevented from owing salaries. And in the semi-final, she successfully argued that the death penalty provides better outcomes for society than life imprisonment. She's our number six seed, Esther Bewaji. Welcome to I Beg to Differ. Thank you. Our second debater is a 15-year-old SS2 student at Rainbow College Day School, Surulere. In the round of 16, he said Lagos state government should run bus parks. In the quarterfinal, he argued that ASU should not be on strike. In the semifinal, he convinced us that children are not a sound retirement plan for their parents. He is our number one seed, Hamida Laranwaju. Welcome to I Beg to Differ. Thank you for having me. How did your parents react to hearing you say you're not their retirement plan? Uh. I'm still getting his voice. Uh, uh, that's yours? for the topic. Oh, yeah? yeah? Okay, you're welcome. At least they know <laughs> that the one million is mine. It's yours, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, okay, cool. Now the contestants have been told the rules, but uh, here they are again. I will give you two topics, which you will debate one after the other. Whichever of you supports the first motion will oppose the second motion and vice versa. For each topic... There will be three rounds, presentation, rebuttal, and closing. You will each get three minutes for each round. First, three minutes to present your positions. Then, three minutes in the rebuttal round to address the points your opponents made. And finally, three minutes to close. And then you will do it all over again for the second topic. This is the main event, and that means no do-overs if you make an error. The clock is the clock. Our panel of judges will score you based on number, quality, and originality of unique points made. If you repeat a point, your score will not increase. Clarity of thought and eloquence of presentation will earn you points for style. Number of opponents' points addressed is important in the rebuttal round. The strength of your rebuttal of each point will determine whether you win or lose. Each judge will add up the points that they've given both of you. They will cast a single vote for the winner or half a vote for each of you if you are tied on their scorecard. If you end up tied on the judges' votes, your total score will be added up to determine the winner. Now you already know your topics. There should be a universal moral standard. There should be a universal moral standard. And Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. There should be a moral standard, a universal moral standard. And Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. For the final time, Lady Luck will decide which topic we will do first and who will support that topic and who will oppose it. Esther is to my right, so she's picking the topic. Hamid, opening the second one. Politicians they deserve. All right. So Nigerians get politicians they deserve, and you are picking universal moral code. All right. So that means we're doing this first. Politicians they deserve because you picked first, oh, okay. and we're gonna do universal moral code second. Now let's decide who opposes and who supports because Esther picked first. Hamin is gonna pick second. You're opposing. Mm. All right. So opposing that uh, Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. And Esther is supporting that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. Which means that uh, when we get to the second topic, you will support that there should be a moral, uh, a universal moral standard. And Esther will oppose that there should be a universal moral standard. Good luck to both of you. May the best debater win. 
Esther, your three minutes start now. Thank you. In Nigeria, we are often of, we're often fond of attacking the messenger and ignoring the message. We are so used to the culture of dragging, threatening, criticizing, and intimidating that it leads us to ask the question, who is actually right to question the government? Good day, moderator, panel of judges, a great timekeeper, co-debater, and wonderful listeners. My name is Baba Jesa, and I'm here to support the motion that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. First, the corruption. Corruption is the order of the day in our society. From the food sellers in the street to the civil servants to the corporate officials to the parasitas in the government, where we have citizens who dupe each other every day and engage in and corruption in every point in turn, then and still complain that the government or the president is corrupt, then where is the corruption really coming from? Secondly, political apartheid. In 2019, there were 84 million registered voters and only 28 million people came out to vote. Now, in a country where we have over 200 million citizens and only a quarter of the citizens are coming out to vote, then if we get bad or incompetent leaders, who are we to complain? Because we are not the ones, we did not ensure that we got the competent leaders desired because we are not even involved in the electoral process in the first place. Thirdly, even the people who are engaged in voting engage in practices such as vote selling. Now, they sell off their conscience to the political aspirants who can give them the most money or the biggest bag of rice. Now, tell me, why would you sell off your freedom and your life for the next four to eight years that a political aspirant will rule for material things that la last less than a month or two? This does not make any sense. So we deserve the politicians we end up getting because of this. Also, the problem of brain drain. Most Nigerians, once they get enough money, they go to foreign countries, further their education, to work there and to contribute to the development of these foreign nations. Now, tell me, who remain in Nigeria to develop the country? Who educate the people? Who will be the future leaders of tomorrow when all our youths and all our citizens are going to different countries and excelling um, externally? Indeed, we also have poor representation of the country, even in the international level. And that is why countries are often fond of enabling and disabling Nigerians from coming to their countries, like we're some kind of toggle switch. Consider the um, Igbo boys that were arrested in UAE for stealing money that was worth 225 million naira. Now, what kind of um, moral standard are we setting for people abroad who look at Nigeria as a country? And again, democracy. Democracy ensures that um, the citizens have the right to select their leaders and it empowers the citizens this way. Therefore, we are held accountable for the leaders we choose and we deserve whatever comes to us as a result of this. And this which leads me to my next one, which is that these politicians are a reflection of the society. Where did politicians come from? Is it not from the same society? Is it not what they learned and what they saw that they will go to office and carry out? Therefore, the politicians not only reflect the society, but are made from the society. So Nigerians deserve the politicians they get because they are the ones who made these politicians that they have. Also, most Nigerians have a backward mentality of um, God will take perfect control or we will get to the bridge when we cross there. We do not consider the future strategies on plans to make for the country in order to promote development. Rather, we let the wind take us wherever we want to go and we either consent to it or we start complaining as we always do in the country. Now tell me, we deserve the leaders we get because of this. We are not making any effort to actually improve our nation. Indeed, many Nigerians engage in wicked practices. So who is actually the ones that are not considering the development? Is it the politicians or the citizens who engage in um, things such as jungle justice, killing people for the most petty and ludicrous crimes? Because we are the ones that are wicked to ourselves to ourselves, are the ones that are destroying our country and our citizens, also through engaging in criminal activities and pollution that further harms the nation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther Bawaji. Well done. Congratulations. The very first round. In the final for the May edition of I Beg to Differ. Her opposer is Hamid Olarenwaju, our number one seed. Your three minutes start now. My opponent would like you to believe that Nigerians are getting the leaders they deserve. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I beg to differ. Good day, prestigious panel judges, most sacred timekeeper, and of course, my very esteemed audience. My name is Hamid Olarenwaju, and today I hope to be convincing you that Nigerians are not getting the leaders they deserve with the following points. First of all, we have to look at the fact that Nigerians uh, Nigerians in power are a smaller representation of the t whole of Nigeria. If we have a few people in power, how can you tell me that they are adequately speaking for the whole? Next, we have to look at the fact that the constitution early on limits what Nigerians can do when a politician enters power and comes out. They seem to become this untouchable god that society cannot bring to justice. We also have to look at the fact that corruption is running rampant in our societies, not only with politicians, but within us ourselves when a few wicked nigerians 
inside Nigerian citizens decide that they are going to help these politicians spread rancor, how are we going to ever get the leaders we truly deserve? We also have to look at the fact that the politicians that are currently in power are intimidating those who are better suited to be in these offices. When um, a politician who is currently in power is stopping somebody who would be better in the office from coming in. How would we say that the politicians we have now are the best representation? Next, we need to look at the fact that we live in a society where politicians are being recycled. How can a person who was in military rule when my mother was still in diapers be um, our president today as I am entering university? It shows that we are not willing to change the... Po it shows that politicians are not willing to leave office, and if they are not willing to leave office, the newer politicians who would be better for us will not be allowed to enter. We also need to look at the fact that that we have come a long way from the colonial times, but the colonial times is what shaped the democracy that we practice today. We have been led astray from the original roots of our societies, where we as a people used to be proud and we used to have kings and chiefs which were also politicians sure we seemed primal but at least we were getting the job done and the society was functioning normally we also need to look at the fact that outside influences are tainting the nigerian economic system nigerian political system when other countries who stand to profit off nigerians um of Nigerians having bad leaders are allowed to make influences in our country. Obviously, the leaders we get will be subpar, and it's hard for Nigerians to fight against this. We also have to look at the fact that some Nigerians in diaspora, some some Nigerians who sell off that who sell their that Nigerians are short-sighted people because of the problems we have on ground today. We cannot look towards the future because if we do not eat to survive today, how will we live to see the future that we are hoping for? Next, we also need to look at the that we are a very religious people. The fact that we're a very religious people should not be a downside. But alas, when we stop this from letting us look into the forward image and face the demon in the mirror, how are we going to get the leaders we truly deserve? We also need to look at the fact that some Nigerian, some people who live who lead our society today aren't even Nigerians. Um, from um, as there were claims over. Pre um, run presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar in the 2019 elections where he was actually born. If people know from Nigerians are trying to lead Nigeria, how can we expect to be led properly? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hamid Olarawaju, well done. <laughs> First round done. Second round coming up. Right here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We're going to dive straight into it because we've got two topics to get through. Hamid, you are the opposer that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. So you are going now. Three minutes. It starts now. Okay. Um, honors to who they are due. Firstly, we Speaking need to your to mic. You can Firstly, raise the paper. we need to look at the fact that my opponent said that corruption is stopping us from progressing in our society. Well, why wouldn't corruption be stopping us from progressing when um, good Nigerians are not allowed to come into office? The wicked ones that are still in power will obviously want to stay in power and do that by any means necessary. Next, you said we need to look at political apathy. I'm sorry, but when we live in a country on election days, everywhere has to shut down. Why? Because we're so afraid that um, political folks will break into our homes and kill kill people who will not be willing to vote for the politicians they support. Why would anybody want to take part in this system? Next, you said the issue of vote selling. Well, how do you expect people not to sell votes? We live in a country where every 96 million Nigerians live around the $1 margin per day. How do you want them how do you want them to pick the best politicians on an empty stomach? You also said that Nigerians flee, flee the country because flee the country which means that when they do not come back the nigerians here are led to have um bad leaders but if nigerians in diaspora are our problems how does that prove that nigerians here are getting the leaders they deserve the nigerians in diaspora are having leaders and those are the foreign leaders that they are currently bowing to next you said that the point of reputation of nigeria i'm sorry i fail to see how this shows that nigerians are getting the leaders they currently deserve because if nigeria has a poor reputation that doesn't necessarily mean that it's lit that's a bad the leaders could be doing the best they could but um due to outside propaganda trying to ruin us from the trying to spoil our public image next you said um the issue of democracy holds nigerians accountable for the leaders we have but if democracy is allowing nigerians to have if democracy is having Nigerians who are bad leaders, that shows that the democracy we're practicing is not working for us. If democracy is not working for us, we should abandon the system altogether. Plus, we have to look at the fact that vote rigging is a serious problem in Nigeria. If 
um votes are being rigged that means fewer fewer actual legit nigerians are making the rounds to where they belong in our societies you also said the politicians are products of the society we have to look that nigeria is a very vast place we have after we have about six geopolitical zones how so that means that um somebody who is from another part of the country is leading the entirety of the country so if the egg is rotting then that means every other sector of nigeria has to suffer it i don't see why you also said the backward mentality of nigerians well if nigerian if nigerians aren't caught up to be running with the rest of the world why are we trying to we should keep our own pace and be trying to progress forward at the speed that pre- best suits us you also said nigerian nigerians are naturally wicked people i think that you find this hard pressed to believe we have a totality of three recognized religions in nigeria if we, people who practice religion people who practice religions cannot be seen to wicked people if that what they are hoping for is the better good of our country after all doesn't most don't most if not all religions teach us to love our brother and be their keeper i would also like to add extra points but i have no time thank you very much well done hamid great work if you just tuned in this is i beg to differ on 99.3 nigeria info the final is live between Hamid Olarawaju and Esther Bewaji. Hamid is 15, Esther is 14, and they've just debated their first topic in this final. Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. Esther says, yes, we are. Hamid says, no, we are not. You just listened to the second round, the rebuttal round. Hamid went first. Esther, your three minutes start now. Thank you. Our podcast has been duly observed. I'd like to address some of the points made by my opening. Firstly, you said Nigerians and the politicians make up a small representation of society. Well, that doesn't take on the fact that they are actually representing the society and they come from the society. What they practice is not what they have already seen happening in our society. It's not how they grew up. It's not what they learn from our societal norms and values. Therefore, if they are in power and they're doing some certain things, it goes to show that because they say that politicians represent the best citizenry. And if that is so, that means everybody in Nigeria, there are very few honest people in Nigeria because most of our co- politicians are corrupt. And if you say that they represent a small population of Nigeria, that goes to show that they are actually they are actually a reflection of society because they are made from the societal norms and values that already exist. And also you said that... Um, corruption is already within Nigeria. That's exactly what I said. Because this corruption is already um, a practice in our country, we cannot develop. And it means that we are getting the leaders we deserve. We are the ones who vote these people in. Let us not deny that fact. And the whole idea of the corruption being in the government is not true. Most of the citizens are also corrupt. And that is why when they get to higher positions, this corruption continues just an, in, in an inflated scale. Then you also said that the politicians are intimidating people who are better suited. Well, what do you mean by intimidating? The constitution says that these, these leaders have a specified tenor that they need to stay in office. And when it is over, they go. We have never had a situation whereby a politician is victimizing any opponent or any citizen in order to stay a longer term in office. The, thing, the problem is that we actually keep re-electing these people. So who is recycling these faces in government? It is us, it is us the citizens. Then you said... Which is my next point. You said that politicians are being recycled. Again, we are the ones voting for these politicians. And if these Nigerians are not ignorant enough to know that these politicians um, are not strong contenders and are actually using this um, foolery to deceive us and to keep us under their and to keep us under their principles, then we are ignorant citizens. Also, you said that um, outside influences taint Nigeria. Well, I don't really understand what you mean because why would anyone want to? put a public a, put a stain on our country Nigeria it is what we reflect that the society will give back to us like I said before and no country will want to stick and um, look at Nigeria as a bad country if you have not already represented bad and corrupt principles to them again you said that we are short-sighted and we need to survive well the thing is we need to also plan for the future. We need to strategize what will happen. Because if we keep focusing on just today, then we will never actually progress. That is why there will always be economic and political stagnation in our country. And that is exactly why I'm saying that we deserve the bad leaders that we are actually getting today. We need to focus more on our future and how to actually elect leaders that are fit for these positions and that will do better for the society. Again, you said, um, I, again, you said that some politicians are not Nigerians. So that doesn't take out of the fact that most of these politicians reflect our society and they come from our moral norms that already exist. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. Well done. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh, if you just tuned in, hello, good evening. Welcome to the final of I Beg to Differ. For the past three weeks, we have heard from phenomenal debater after phenomenal debater. And today we have the final two. Hamid Olarunwaju, Esther Bewaji. Esther is 14, Hamid is 15. They're in secondary school, both in SS2. And they have just debated their first topic that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. Now, of course, they've done the first round, they've done the second round, they still have a third round to get through, and one more topic. But all of that will happen after this very short break. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, I'm your moderator. Don't go away. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. We live in a digital world where almost everything we use is powered by technology, from self-driving cars to smartwatches and phones. This has led to an increased demand for skilled computer programmers. The future is now, so equip your child with the right skills while they are young. At Ulessing Coding School, your child will learn Scratch, HTML, CSS, and Python using the Harvard Computing Curriculum and build real-world projects like websites, apps, and games. Don't miss this opportunity. Sign them up at code.ulesson.com or call plus 234-7000-222-333. Get a 20% discount when you mention I Beg to Differ. Nigeria Info. I am Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator. That was a fantastic first and second round. Excellent first debate. Thank you so much to both of you. It's time now for the closing round. This time we'll start with a motion supporter, 14 year old Esther Bawaji, who says the Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. Three minutes, and it starts now. I would like to add to the point I've already stated before. Firstly, like I said, most of Nigerians are ignorant. They are not really aware of the democratic principles and what they entail. Most of them are not even aware of their basic rights and responsibilities in society. So therefore, if we end up with some kind of bad or incompetent leadership, how can you say that these Nigerians do not deserve this? Because they are the ones who put them in power. They are the ones who who um, endorse these leaders, what they are doing today. Ex- uh, secondly, there is no accountability. Most Nigerians are not often f- um, fond of holding their leaders accountable, which does not promote transparency in government. Like I said, they are often fond of vote buying. And I, and I hope you know that this indirectly legitimizes corruption and stealing of funds because that already is a that's already is engaging in bribery and corruption in society. So when they know that these leaders do these things and they vote for them, then they obviously deserve whatever comes after that. Also, Nigerians celebrate and promote these corrupt leaders and these insincere leaders, even when they get into power, thereby embracing their hatred and their lies and these corrupt beliefs in society. So how can we say that we do not deserve this? Again, most of Nigerians do not carry out their responsibilities. Like, don't you know the high level of tax evasion we have? Like, a, research, um, a research carried out by the... Um, FIRS, so that 40, only 40 million Nairans pay tax. 40 million Nigerians. Only 40 million Nigerians pay tax. And this goes to show that most of Nigerians do not even care about the development. They do not give any regard or respect to our country, Nigeria. As Anyways, there's also increase in crime aid. These crimes such as corruption, um, kidnapping, and rituals and others goes to show that the citizens are actually the major thing that is pulling our country deeper into the pit of underdevelopment as well as destruction of property such as um, the NSAs. That, that goes to show that we may want to carry out things that may develop the society. We may have the right mindset towards it, but even the way we carry it out is, dest- is destructive and unnecessary. Again... We engage in ethnic bigotry because most of Nigerians do not even care who is fit to actually rule the country. They just want to focus on which Niger- which um, candidate is coming from that state or which candidate practices that same religion. And when we focus on all these 
um, trivial things. We will never actually get competent leaders that we desire, but we do not desire since we are the ones that are actually voting in these corrupt and incompetent leaders. And like I said, the democratic principles ensure that we get what we deserve. What goes around comes around. And it still all boils down to voting because no leader will end up in power if you do not vote um, them in power. Again, like I said, I didn't say um, Nigerians were naturally wicked. I just said most Nigerians are actually wicked. Actually wicked. Because they're the ones that engage in all these lowly acts, such as the jungle justice system, like I gave an instance of, thereby killing people for unnecessary and ridiculous reasons. So who is actually wicked to us? Is it not us that are being wicked to ourselves and not the politicians? And indeed, um, um, most Nigerians actually deserve the politicians they Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done. Good job on finishing up the first topic, Esther Bewaji. Congratulations. Well done. And now it's time for her opposer, our number one seed, Hamid Olarawaju. Your three minutes start now. Thank you. All critical being duly observed. I would like to clear some of my opponent's thoughts while adding some to my already established points. Firstly, it's the fact that our politicians make up such a small percentage of our country. When you are doing cross-referencing, you need a wide sample space. So if we have only if like one to 100,000, one politician to every 100,000 Nigeria, obviously there's a 50-50% chance that you will pick a rotting egg. Next we, ha next, we have to also realize that corruption is already a grass, is already put itself into the roots of our country. Anybody who wants to come now and remove it will have to dig deeper than ever before. How are we going to expect these people to save us from the um, insanity of politicians we have already encountered? Next, we have to look at the fact that I didn't say that politicians are being intimidated while their opponents are still in office. More wicked politicians take to methods such as hiring thugs, such as the ad bureaus that I already talked about in a previous episode to intimidate better, more suited politicians, which leads to them ending up in political offices because their opponent does not want to risk their lives. Next, we elect, we seem to keep on getting it wrong, electing bad leaders. This is because Nigerians as a people, we are short-sighted and that's because we have come, we haven't come as long as a way as a lot of the other countries in the world have. We are, we are barely 60 years of independence. Other countries are hitting three, three centuries. How are we going to know how to pick the better leaders unless we have trial and fails first also we have so we have so many political parties but we only seem to have two major political parties who have any big major sway in our society the pdp and the apc are you telling me out of these two major political parties we get a fair representation of what all nigerians seem to stand for next we also have to look at the fact that nigerians also, I'd like to add the point that um, the judiciary is not doing its job properly. If the judiciary was properly investigating all of these um, bad politicians, we wouldn't have them coming back into our societies. It's not a case of we are voting in bad politicians. If the judiciary did its job originally and removed these bad politicians from the cycle, we wouldn't even have the chance to vote them back in. We also have to look at the fact that the media is not properly doing its job. If the media was doing its job properly by raising awareness or asking the tough questions that the people in the society need, need to hear, maybe they wouldn't be as short-sighted as they are, they are right now. We also have to look at the fact that some Nigerian politicians are actually good and they're fighting for what is right in our societies. But if they are fighting for what is right and the call is not being heard by the big dogs on top, such as the president, the Senate president and such, how are we going to get um, a, the leaders we rightfully deserve? Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time, Hamid Alarawaju. And with that, we've come to the end. <laughs> of the first debate. Well done, Lagos, if you just tuned in, this is I Beg to Differ, the final for the May edition 2022. I'm Sandra Ezekwesli, your moderator, and you've just heard from Esther Bewaji, a 14-year-old in SS2 at Silver Sands Hall School. Lecky, her opposer is Hamid Olarawaju, who is also 14, 
at uh, uh, the Rainbow College Day School. He's 15, he's in SS2, and they just debated that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. Amazing, amazing stuff from our two finalists. Okay. <sighs> we'll take a break. When we come back, it'll be time for the second topic. The second topic is that there should be a universal moral standard. There should be a universal moral standard. Now, because Esther Bawaji supported in the first debate, she's going to oppose in the second one, which means that when we come back, you'll be hearing from Hamid Olarawaju, our opposer and number one seed. Again, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This is Nigeria Info 99.3. Don't go away. What does it take to win a million naira? The only thing we need to realize is that when ASU goes on strike, it brings out problems for other groups that are in the university, such as in non-academic staff. People are currently considering the physical or um, psychological needs of criminals over the crime committed or how it affected victims, which is not right. In Hamid Olarawaju's first try, he lost to the eventual winner. Congratulations and well done, Tambita. You just qualified for the semi-finals next week. Hamid, we're going to do this again sometime soon. I would really love to see you do it next year. And I would really hope that she He's not here. But for some people, defeat is just motivation. You told me off air that um, you came back this time for revenge. <laughs> this was vengeance for you. I expected that it was going to come back with fire. Mm. Last week, he said, <laughs> Half a year later, he came back even more impressive. Have you seen the state of parks in Lagos nowadays? They're deplorable. Then I saw any health hazard everyone to come across. He broke his quarterfinal jinx. Asu only wants to increase the money that is coming to the pockets of its lecturers. That is the reason why they're also avoiding the IPPIS scheme. And lived up to his billing as the number one seed. In countries like Nigeria, where about half the population only earns around one dollar a day, how do children want to support their parents when they can barely support themselves? Esther Bewaji has never tasted defeat. In her first tournament, she's the highest scorer so far. During the 2015 elections, when the candidates for Harry complained about the prices of denomination forms, the then APC chairman, John Oyegu, said that it was a tactic employed to separate the men from boys. And she has upset two higher seats. First, the number three. Even after being given federal billers, many of these state governors claim to be using the money for infrastructure development. And then, the number two. It returns of the World population have abolished the death penalty, yet with five countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and some states in the U.S. in two practices. But to be number one, she has to beat the number one. Only one of them can win one million naira. Can Esther get another upset? Some people might talk about how cruel and unusual punishments are not supposed to be inflicted. But like I've already said before, the penalty is being carried out in non-brutal or torturous ways. Can Hamid outscore her points record? Another point we need to realize is that it is weakening Nigeria's economy. When ASU goes on strike, universities will now be remaining dormant. Who has what it takes to be one winner, one million naira? Join me, Sandra Ezekwesili, on Thursday at 4 p.m. as we crown the next I Beg to Differ champion. This debate is supported by ULESSON, RLG Communications, and obiwizi.com. Amazing first debate, amazing, excellent work uh, between Hamid Olarawaju and Esther Bewaji. They debated that Nigerians uh, getting the politicians they deserve. All right. Uh, right now, let's uh, move on to the second topic. Our second topic is that there should be a universal moral standard. Hamid, your three minutes start now. Who are thou to test my convictions? Who are thou to give me my morals? These are the questions that comes to anybody's mind when they hear that people should be held to a universal moral standard. Good day, prestigious panel of judges, most accurate timekeeper, and of course, my very esteemed audience. My name is Hamid Onarawaji, and hopefully for the last time, I hope to be convincing you all that we need a un we need to adhere to a universal moral standard with the following points which are prepared. First of which being that it will reduce the rate at which crimes are committed in our society. Having a universal moral standard would set a precedence for what the police is looking for in our society in terms of crimes, which will does discourage criminals from committing crimes. Secondly, we have to look at the fact that even when criminals will now still want to commit these crimes, it will be easier to process them as the moral standard will clearly cut. It will no longer be a case of so-so-and-so is not a legal 
is not technically illegal therefore he c- does not have to go to jail next we have to look at the fact that you create a more stable environment to raise our children as it will give more clear-cut answers to the difficult questions that little ones sometimes have for us it will also teach us to have tolerance for one another in our society when everyone has to adhere to the same moral standards it will mean that you appreciate what the other person is also going through we also have to look at the fact that due to things such as religion and culture we know this is possible because people for thousands of years have been living to um, moral standards that they they themselves have put upon have put upon themselves to keep them in line and in check we also have to look at the fact that it will save lives um it is currently a problem in ethics where a doctor does not necessarily have to save the life of a person if they do not have the money to pay for the treatment at hand having a universal moral standard we can eliminate such crises like this it will also help people deal with situations situations and periods of crisis more clearly when pe- more people tend to freeze up when they're pre- presented with a crisis this will help alleviate that as they will have a by the book instruction manual to how to get through their moral dilemmas it will also increase it will also make a place for outfits of for outcasts in our societies when people who did not know right from wrong have give, been given a manual to know right from wrong now it will make it easier for them to fit in in our societies thus it will bring our world closer together we also have to look at the fact that it will increase cooperation between countries to establish this um moral code in the first place more co- countries are going to have to come together and decide what works and what doesn't in this process they will they will eventually establish world peace which will lead to a better world altogether it will also stop people from being cheated we have cases of children work of child factories in countries such as china and bangladesh when we hold the world to a universal moral standard employers can be held accountable for doing such things we also have to look at the fact that in relation to the first topic that it will um give people in countries the politicians they deserve when everyone is held to a moral standard it will reduce things such as corruption and money laundering in our societies we also have to look at the fact that it will make the world it will make it easier for people to live their lives as Albert Einstein used to wear the same clothes every day so he wouldn't waste brain power thank you thank you very much Hamid and his favorite bell again well done congratulations first round done two more to go for Hamid but let's hear from Esther his opposer opposing that there should be a universal moral standard. Your three minutes start now. Thank you. Universal moral standards simply refers to moral values or principles that guide day to day living in societies. Good day, moderator, our panel of judges, accurate timekeeper, co debater, and wonderful listeners. My name is Bella Jester, and I'm here to oppose the motion that there should be a universal moral standard. Firstly, morality is generally subjective because what may be morally acceptable in one culture or one religion will be immoral in another religion. A good example is in a traditional Muslim society, women are required to cover some parts of their body, such as their face and their legs and their arms. While in Western culture, they are allowed to dress openly and nobody obligates them to do such. Secondly, what people say may be different from what is actually being implemented, as the underlying principles may be similar, as my opponent suggested, but the outcome would differ greatly. A good example is um, a general principle of maybe loving and respecting your family and honoring them. But, but do you know that in some cultures, some people kill their parents at certain ages just so that when they go to the afterlife, they will be strong and um, vigorous. This is condemnable, yes, but this may be their own way of upholding that moral standard. So how will we be able to define exactly what is right or wrong? This seems to my next one, which is that we have the principle of moral relativism. And morals depend greatly on situational and categorical relevance, as different situations require different um, moral standards to be upheld, even if they generally rec- re- they generally follow the same principles, which will lead to the bringing into sentiment and replacing logic in the moral standards, because then there will be many obstacles. Obsess- um, exceptions and reconsiderations to be made and this complicates the process speaking of which we already have the law that specifies what is right or wrong why do we need some vague and indefinite moral standards to tell us again what people should do and how they should live their lives this is not supposed to be supposed to be again individualism should be um, upheld in every society because so- we need to remember that society is made up of individuals who have their own self-interest and who need to actualize themselves individually and as long as they fall within the legal boundary that is whatever their actions do fall within the legal boundary. I see no reasons why there should be moral standards again that should hold these people down. Again, there's no guarantee 
that these moral standards will be implemented because they are just like they are very vague and indefinite it is difficult to spell out exactly what a moral standard says and how it can be applied in different situations and even if it is implemented what are the guarantee that anybody will follow them we still have the laws that puts people's money time and even their own lives at risk yes we still have millions and millions of people disobeying the law and you're telling me some moral standards that guide living will prevent people from and um, um, doing crimes or doing whatever they want to do. That is not true. Speaking of which, if you consider the issue of psychopaths, it's not that moral knowledge or the standards that are necessarily wrong. They know what they should and should not do. It's just the moral emotions to say that they do not actually care. And this doesn't stop them from doing anything. Again, people should be allowed to make their own opinions and decisions based on what they already know and what they have seen in their own various cultures and societies. Speaking of cultures, it will violate the rights of some and um, uphold the principles of some others. Like the example I gave the Muslim woman and the Western woman, it does not mean she should tell the Western woman to cover up. That violates her rights because she can dress anyhow she likes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. Well done. Good job. Two more rounds. And we will find out who our one winner, one million naira, is. Esther, as the motion opposer, you get to go first in the rebuttal round. It's time now for the rebuttals. Your three minutes start now. Of course, being duly observed, I would like to address some of the points made by my opponents. Firstly, you said it reduces crime rates. And I think this is ridiculous because, like I already said, we have laws that actually put people's whole lives at risk. People can actually die because of a crime. Yet we still see all these heinous crimes being committed daily. So how can you tell me that some... Um, um, predefined moral standards will prevent crimes in society. That is not true. And also, you said it's to help people in raising children. Well, I agree, but not all moral standards must conform. Not all moral standards must exactly be the same, which is why we don't need a moral, a universal moral standard. Because how my parents may raise me may be quite different from how your parents may raise you. And this doesn't mean that anybody is necessarily right or wrong. But different considerations should be made based on how people have lived their lives in society and how they feel that children should grow up and also where their children grow up. Also, you said it's for most tolerance in society well tolerance exists because we need to appreciate people's diversity and promoting an universal moral standards will not even encourage this diversity because different morals should apply to different cultures every culture or every nation or every society every religion should, ha- should be allowed to uphold their own moral standards to promote understanding and better tolerance in society because there is um, richness in diversity again you said that it will save lives and eliminate crisis well like i've already said um we should focus on Improving our criminal justice system. These are actually things that can save lives and can prevent crisis in society. Moral standards are greatly subjective, like I have said, and they just depend on how people view them and how people feel they can make the most logical choice based on them. It does not mean it actually stops um, any sort of crisis in society. Also, you said it's, it um, protects outcasts in the society. Well, I don't really understand what you mean. It's not that nobody knows what is right or wrong in society. People already know. Like I gave the example of psychopaths. It is not their moral standards or their moral knowledge that is wrong, but the emotions. That is, they do not have any fear and they do not care if they disobey these laws or these moral principles. And the difference is that what may apply in some societies may not apply in others. So how can we tell when exactly a person infringes these moral laws? Again, you said that... It encourages cooperation between countries. Well, there are already laws that specify how countries relate to one another. And these moral principles not being properly defined will actually lead to confusion, which can cause crisis and abuse of power. Also, you said it will stop people from cheating. Well, like I've already said, and even the justice system cannot 100% remove all sorts of crime in society. So moral standards that do not even really specify anything or that are not even properly definite or defined will not... Um, help with this also you said that it helps us to get the politicians we deserve i don't really um, understand what you mean by that because if politicians want to be corrupt they will still be corrupt as long as they have been elected into that position and they, and they don't like follow what they plan to do that means that corruption still exists and no moral standards will prevent a politician from embezzling money or laundering if they want to do also he said it makes it easier to live lives i disagree somebody can kill they can steal they can do whatever they want to do these moral standards do not um, stop people from doing anything thank you thank you very much well done right on time <laughs> Woo! How opposed is Hamid Olara Waju. You've got three minutes in this rebuttal round. It starts now. Um, thank you. Also, it's very good. My opponent said that morality is subjective. Well, 
the fact that morality is subjective is for that reason why we should have a universal moral standard so everyone can be held to the same moral accountability if one person is held to different moral accountabilities than another how do they expect to function in different societies if somebody from arab should come to the united states and he does um something that in his society would be seen as fits and boy in this society would be seen out outrageous people wouldn't have the tolerance to know that um, what he did is not actually wrong. Next is the fact that you said um, things differ in society to society. Yes, I agree with that. Having a universal moral standard does not mean that people do not get to keep um, what makes their society special. It just means, in general, giving so-so and so parameters. You should not do so-so and so in said situation. Next is that morals can change based on you said morals can change based on the situation at hand i quite agree with this but by al- giving a large outline to what morals should be in our society it gives people the ideas of what they should be trying to accomplish when giving a situation at hand next you said that moral standards may be vague well having a clear cut moral stand having clear cut moral standards is the idea it's not a case of our moral standards are not that um, moral standards will not be clear cut. They will not be clear cut if you do not write them in a way, if you write them in a way that is open to interpretation, instead of writing them in a way that will allow people to know that what I have said here means what I have said here and whatever you think about it does not matter in this situation. Next, you said that um, we should try to develop our legal, um, our laws our laws and legislations well if we make morals part of the laws and legislations it will lead to a more vibrant society and group of people if we decide that we're not going to allow people to be next you said that what are next you said sociopaths and and psychopaths can be stopped yes people with disabilities cannot be stopped it's the same way that somebody We have the Paralympics and the Olympics. Somebody with a disability should not be allowed to compete with somebody without the disability because of the unfair advantage. That is why we should have a set of moral standards to hold everybody accountable to. Next, you said that it will stop the rights and privileges of some cultures. People can keep what makes them special. All I'm saying is that we should have a general outline that if you do certain things that fall under these certain criteria, you should be upheld to um, answer to these certain things that you have caused. You said that there's no guarantee that people will follow them. There's no guarantee that people will follow laws too. But we live in a society where um, laws have to be enforced by people such as the military and the police. The same thing can be done with morals. Um, Laws are rules that we impose impose on one another to keep um, stability in the society. Moral standards can also be rules and regulations that we impose on one another to keep stability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hamid Alaran Waju, well done. Wow, 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 wow. I do not envy the judges, but I'm also grateful that I am not a judge because this is the final. And it's like someone on Twitter said, finalist, no be moi moi. And we've got two finalists today who are showing us why they are in the Nigeria Info I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament final. I'm Sandra Ezekwasili, your moderator. You just heard the voice of Hamid Olarunwaju, our number one seed, 15 years old. Can you believe he's 15 years old? He's in SS2. He is a student at Rainbow College Day School. And... Um, he supports that there should be a universal moral standard. And of course, Esther Bewaji, 14. She's, are you sure you're 14? Like if I didn't see your, your ID card myself to verify your age, I would have doubted that you were 14. But she's 14. She's amazing. She's opposing that there should be a universal moral standard. She is in SS2 at uh, Silver Sands Hall School. That's in Lekki. We have one final round the last round the round that decides who our next champion is the third champion of the i beg to differ debate tournament we'll take a break when we come back it'll be time for that closing it gives them time to catch their breath walk around hamid likes to walk around uh esther just sits there like very calmly (laughs) but we'll take this break we'll be back and then we'll keep going don't go away lagos what does it take to win a million naira 
Another thing we need to realize is that when ASU goes on strike, it brings out problem for other groups that are in the university, such as the non-academic staff. People are currently considering the physical or um, psychological needs of criminals over the crime committed or how it's affected victims, which is not right. In, in Hamid Olarawaju's first try, he lost to the eventual winner. Congratulations and well done, Tambita. You just qualified for the semi-finals next week. Hamid, we're going to do this again sometime soon. I would really love to see you do it next year. And I would really hope that she's not here. But for some people, defeat is just motivation. Told me off air that um, you came back this time for revenge. <laughs> this was vengeance for you. I expected that it was going to come back with fire. Mm. Last week, he said, <laughs> Half a year later, he came back even more impressive. Have you seen the state of parks in Lagos nowadays? They're deplorable. Then I saw any health hazard everyone they come across. He broke his quarterfinal jinx. ASU only wants to increase the money that is coming to the pockets of its lecturers. That is the reason why they're also avoiding the IPPIS scheme. And lived up to his billing as the number one seed. In countries like Nigeria, where about half the population only earns around one dollar a day, how do children want to support their parents when they can barely support themselves? Esther Bewaji has never tasted defeat. Who can stop this Esther? In her first tournament, she's the highest scorer so far. During the 2015 elections, when the candidates were highly complained about the prices of denomination forms, the then APC chairman, John Oyegu, said that it was a tactic employed to separate the men from boys. And she has upset two higher seats. First, the number three. Even after being given federal billers, many of these state governors claim to be using the money for infrastructure development. And then, the number two. It returns of the world population have abolished the death penalty, yet with five countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and some states in the U.S. in two practices. But to be number one, she has to beat the number one. Only one of them can win one million naira. Can Esther get another upset? Some people might talk about how cruel and unusual punishments are not supposed to be inflicted. But like I've already said before, the death penalty is being carried out in non-brutal or torturous ways. Can Hamid outscore her points record? Another point we need to realize is that it is weakening Nigeria's economy. When ASU goes on strike, universities will now be remaining dormant. Who has what it takes to be one winner, one million naira? Join me, Sandra Ezekwesili, on Thursday at 4 p.m. as we crown the next I Beg to Differ champion. This debate is supported by ULESSON, RLG Communications, and obiwizi.com. All right. And the final round right here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. You have listened to Esther Bewaji. You've listened to Hamid Olarawaju. They've debated that Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve. They're now debating that there should be a universal moral standard. Esther keeps humming. <laughs> We're hearing you hum, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> and now they are about to wrap up with the closing round for there should be a universal moral standard. Hamid Alara Roji, 15 years old, supports that motion. And because he went first for this topic, he's going to wrap up by going first again. Your final three minutes in the May edition of the Beg to Differ Debate Tournament starts now. Thank you. All protocols being duly observed. I would like to um, clear some doubts my opponent had about my points while adding a few extra points along the way. Firstly, it's the case of it reducing crime rates is not just that criminals criminals will still be criminals, yes, but when people have another set of rules to live by aside from the already established legal ones, it will serve as a even bigger deterrent to crimes that are already being committed. Next, it's that the fact that you said not all morals must be taught to children, well, it's the fact that children should be allowed to pick up what they want to learn. But if they are a fixed set of fundamental rules that children don't learn, for example, in some cultures, children don't learn that it's wrong to steal. They learn that um, it's all right to steal when you don't get caught or if it benefits you. You need to teach people a way of living that will benefit everybody else in the society. We need to remember that the world is not a global village, that everyone can be anywhere at any time. We also, you also said that it will not promote tolerance in the society, but the thing is that it promotes tolerance in the society not by removing the differences that people have from one another, but highlighting the fact that it, we're all human beings and it's hard to live a life and that if we're all allowed to see what the other person is going through, it will make us more sympathetic and more tolerable to other people's um, problems. 
You also said that there's a beauty in diversity. Well, I agree with this. In Putting in a moral standard does not say that people will not be allowed to have the... Um, will not be allowed to have what makes them unique. It just means that there's some th certain things that should never be done by us human beings and that we should have them written out for people who might not see them as clearly defined as they should obviously be. Next is also, you said that we should pro we should use them, that we should improve our legal standards instead. Well, we could make our... In, we could make our moral standards part of our legal standards. We could make uh, morality part of the law. It will increase... It will increase the human side in each and every one of us if we have to consider issues with a sense of right and wrong. You also said some people can be taught right from wrong. Well, that's the reason why we have legal standards. Obviously, people who cannot learn the difference will have to be put where they belong, sometimes in prison, sometimes in um, asyl asylums. You also said... Um, the standards might not be properly defined. That's why I said the leaders of the world have to come together to decide what works for them and what doesn't. Therefore, humanity, humanity can work together and in the process, they might even achieve world peace because when you are seeing what other people see from their own culture, it gives you a fresh, new, brand new perspective on the way you live your own life. You also said it does not make... You also countered my point on it making it easier to live life. I'm sorry, but how does having a set of rules that tells you right from wrong keeps you out of getting in trouble with the law not make your life easier to live? Albert Einstein used to live every day wearing the same clothes. Why did he do that? He did that to preserve um, brain power. On the same point. Thank you very much and well done. <laughs> The final bell ever, Hamid. Well done. You want to go again? <laughs> Esther, for the last time on the edition for me, your three minutes start now. Observed, I would like to address some of the points made by my opponents as well as add to what I've already stated. Okay, firstly, these um, universal moral standards with nine people of their right to free will everybody should have the choice to make their decisions on their own as and as, as long as it doesn't go any le as it doesn't go against any legal law then why should we define moral standards based on what they should do secondly this will promote the culture of stigmatization because it automatically means that some people deserve moral guard um better than some others and it's, that is not true because this will lead to stigmatization and ostracizing other people in the society, which can affect their self-esteem as well as their mental and emotional stability. Because the truth is not everybody can um, live exactly the same way when it comes to morality. And like I said before, as long as they're not disobeying the law, I don't, feel, I don't feel there's a need to define this universal moral standard. Speaking of which, some people actually just... Um, can't live according to the conventional norms. And that's why we have unconventionality. Not everybody um, will live according to the moral standards, but that doesn't mean that they're causing any harm to anybody in the society. Like, I gave the example of how um, how my parents may train me may be different from him. And that doesn't mean that um, anybody's right or wrong. It just means that people have different morals on how they feel that um, they should actually train others. And also... It, um, the universal moral standard may lead to mis misinterpretation because people will definitely want to use it as an abuse of power or rights, especially since it's not something that can be clearly defined for all situations, unlike the law. Therefore, why then people will definitely misinterpret it for their own personal benefits. And also, it promotes a narrowed mindset because asking people to only conform to some certain moral standards will not allow them to actually witness and see the dynamism of morality in the society. Therefore, you are not even encouraging uh, encouraging them to have proper discernment as well as critical and, uh, and analytical thinking in society. And again, like I also said, um, the law already specifies things that we should and should not do. So when my opponent says that we need these other moral standards to um, help the society, that is not technically true. Again, um again when you talked about tolerance tolerance only applies when we also have difference in society we need to be able to tolerate our differences so implementing a universal moral code do not help in doing this and every culture should 
be allowed to have their own moral code that suits them, such as in Islam, polygamy is actually allowed as long as you can sustain it. But we all know in Christianity, it is one man, one woman, one woman. So imposing one moral beliefs on another, don't you think it will actually lead to conflicts, unlike world peace, like you suggested? Because not everybody will actually want to conform to some other person's moral standards or belief. That is completely wrong. Also. Um, so many people are already being put at risk by implementing these moral standards and pe- people should be allowed to follow um, the law accordingly. Again, you said, again, most of these moral principles are vague and indefinite. It's like the whole idea of being fair. What is the concept of being fair? It simply means be ethical. But like I said, we have moral relatives in that applies to different situations in society. Thank you. Thank you very much, Esther. Well done. <laughs> And with that, we've come to the end of the debate. Amazing, amazing stuff from our two finalists. Esther Bewaji, 14 years old, our number six. Uh, number six seed uh, from Silver Sands Hall School. She's in SS2 and her opponent is Hamid Olarawaju, our number one seed, 15 years old, in SS2 at Rainbow College Day School. They have debated the Nigerians are getting the politicians they deserve and now they've just debated that there should be a universal moral standard. They've done their part. It's now over to the judges. They're going to need a few minutes to add up their scores and determine their votes. All the best. Chibu is sweating. <laughs> Vaughn is pressing calculator. Dr. Nduka is like Sandra waiting me this. Well, good luck to the judges. Lagos, we're seeing your comments online. We're seeing your comments on Facebook. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for commenting. Well done to both our debaters. This was beautiful. Let's take a break. Hopefully by the time the break is over, the results will be in. If the results are not in, we'll take another break until the results... (laughs) Already, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. S Ezekwesili on social media. Sandra Ezekwesili everywhere. Talk to me about this tournament online. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't go away. What does it take to win a million naira? The only thing we need to realize is that when ASU goes on strike, it brings out problems for other groups that are in the university, such as the non-academic staff. People are currently considering the physical or um, psychological needs of criminals over the crime committed or how it affected victims, which is not right. In Hamid Olarawaju's first try, he lost to the eventual winner. Congratulations and well done, Tambita. You just qualified for the semi-finals next week. Hamid, we're going to do this again sometime soon. I would really love to see you do it next year. And I would really hope that she not really but for some people, defeat is just motivation. You told me off air that um, you came back this time for revenge. <laughs> this was vengeance for you. I expected that it was going to come back in fire. Mm. We came. We <laughs> came. <laughs> Half a year later, he came back even more impressive. Have you seen these Tito parks in Lagos nowadays? They're deplorable, then I saw any health hazard everyone to come across. He broke his quarterfinal jinx. Asu only wants to increase the money that is coming to the pocket of its lecturers. That is the reason why they're also avoiding the IPPIS scheme. And lived up to his billing as the number one seed. In countries like Nigeria, where about half the population only earns around one dollar a day, how do children want to support their parents when they can barely support themselves? Esther Bewaji has never tasted in her first tournament, she's the highest scorer so far. During the 2015 elections, when the candidates for Harry complained about the prices of denomination the nomination forms, the then APC chairman, John Oyeku, said that it was a tactic employed to separate the men from boys. And she has upset two higher seats. First, the number three. Even after being given federal billers, many of these governors claim to be using the money for infrastructure development. And then, the number two. It returns of the world population have abolished death penalty, yet with five countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and some states in the U.S., it's two practices. But to be number one, she has to beat the number one.
Only one of them can win one million naira. Can Esther get another upset? Some people might talk about how cruel and unusual punishment are not supposed to be inflicted. But like I've already said before, the penalty is being carried out in non-brutal or torturous ways. Can Hamid outscore her points record? Another point we need to realize is that it is weakening Nigeria's economy. When ASU goes on strike, universities will now be remaining dormant. Who has what it takes to be one winner, one million naira? Join me, Sandra Ezekwesili, on Thursday at 4 p.m. as we crown the next I Beg to Differ champion. This debate is supported by ULESSON, RLG Communications, and obiwizi.com. All right. The, <laughs> the judges have said, please play the break again. So I will play the break again while they continue to collect the results. Lagos, please don't go away. What does it take to win a million naira? Another thing we need to realize is that when ASU goes on strike, it brings out problems for other groups that are in the university, such as the non-academic staff. People are currently considering the physical or um, psychological needs of criminals over the crime committed or how it affected victims, which is not right. In Hamid Olarawaju's first try, he lost to the eventual winner. Congratulations and well done, Tambita. You just qualified for the semi-finals next week. Hamid, we're going to do this again sometime soon. I would really love to see you do it next year. And I would really hope that she not but for some people, defeat is just motivation. It told me off air that um, you came back this time for revenge. <laughs> this was vengeance for you. I expected that it was going to come back with fire. Mm. We came. We <laughs> came. <laughs> Half a year later, he came back even more impressive. Have you seen these state parks in Lagos nowadays? They're deplorable, they're an ISO and a health hazard to everyone they come across. He broke his quarterfinal jinx. ASU only wants to increase the money that is coming to the pockets of its lecturers. That is the reason why they're also avoiding the IPPIS scheme. And lived up to his billing as the number one seed. In countries like Nigeria, where about half the population only earns around one dollar a day, how do children want to support their parents when they can barely support themselves? Esther Bawaji has never tasted defeat. Who can stop this Esther? In her first tournament, she's the highest scorer so far. During the 2015 elections, when the candidate Buhari complained about the prices of denomination forms, it then APC chairman John Oyeku said that it was a tactic employed to separate the men from boys. And she has upset two higher seats. First, the number three. Even after being given federal bill out, many of these state governors claim to be using the money for infrastructure development. And then, the number two. It returns of the world population have abolished death penalty, yet with five countries, including Iran, Saudi Arabia, Nigeria, and some states in the U.S. in two practices. But to be number one, she has to beat the number one. Only one of them can win one million naira. Can Esther get another upset? Some people might talk about how cruel and unusual punishment are not supposed to be inflicted. But like I've already said before, the penalty is being carried out in non-brutal or torturous ways. Can Hamid outscore her points record? Another point we need to realize is that it is weakening Nigeria's economy. When ASU goes on strike, universities will now be remaining dormant. Who has what it takes to be one winner, one million naira? Join me, Sandra Ezekwesili, on Thursday at 4 p.m. as we crown the next I Beg to Differ champion. This debate is supported by ULESSON, RLG Communications, and obiwizi.com. Lagos, I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. The past three weeks have been amazing. Thank you so much to Nigeria Info for creating this. Thank you so much to the debaters who auditioned. Thank you to the final 16 who made it into the live shows thank you to the final two standing here i hope you're watching live on facebook and youtube facebook nigeria info 99.3 youtube nigeria info fm our first debater is a 14 year old ss2 student at Silver Sands Hall School, Lecky. In the round of 16, she told us that party nomination forms are not too expensive. In the quarterfinals, she explained why government cannot be prevented from owing salaries. In the semi final, she successfully argued that the death penalty provides better outcomes 
for society than life imprisonment. Today she has told us that Nigerians get the politicians they deserve and that there should be no universal moral standard. Our second debater is 15 years old in SS2, a student at Rainbow College Day School, Surulere. In the round of 16, he said Lagos state government should run bus parks. In the quarterfinals, he argued that ASU should not be on strike. In the semi-final, he convinced us that children are not a sound retirement plan for their parents. Today, he has said to us that Nigerians are not deserving of the politicians they're getting and that there should be a moral standard, a universal moral standard. The results are in. We have a split decision. Judge Vaughan voted 168 to 167. Hamid. Judge Nduka voted 230 to 206. Esther. And Chief Judge Andy voted 224 to 210 for the new champion, Esther Bawaji. Congratulations and well done. Good job, Esther. Well done. How does it feel to be winner today? I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to win. <laughs> Lagos, thank you so much for being a part of this as always. Thank you to my boss, Femi Obong Daniels, who's in the studio with us. Thank you to our chief judge, Chief Andy Oboforibo Vaughn. Thank you so much for the brilliant work that you continue to do. Our head of marketing is here as well. And she does so much to ensure that we can bring you I Beg to Differ every day. Congratulations to you, Esther Bewaji. You are the third I Beg to Differ debate champion. Hamid, thank you for a wonderful outing. You redeemed yourself from the very first tournament where we met you and you're here today and you have done amazing, phenomenal things. Congratulations to both of you again and well done. Can we get that mic so that we can hear from the general manager, Cool FM, Wazobia FM and Nigeria Info FM. Well, what do I say? Um, what a contest. Mm. Um, you gave it your all. We, we were having our own debate downstairs. We, we probably didn't work today. Um, and, and just like the final decision, we were split um, both ways. In the end, I, I, I believe it's a, it's a decision uh, that's fair, and I believe it's also a decision that puts both of you on the map. And not just both of you, even Kwawea who finished third and Kolade who was fourth. Yes. Congratulations to all these young minds. Um, so Hamid, well, you didn't go all the way as in pocketing the prize money, but you are a champion already. I'm sure you already feel that way. So congratulations, congratulations. Thank you, sir. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again um, in the future. Esther, um, you are all conquering. Um, I couldn't be more proud, and I'm sure your 
your parents, your teachers, your your classmates, your friends, everybody are proud of you. I also like, um, I particularly like the fact that, you know, I liked your um, your forthrightness. Like, okay, I wasn't expecting it. Congratulations to me. Uh, congratulations to you. You did well. You were awesome and you thoroughly deserved it. So congratulations. Um, um, I, I'd like to thank everybody who, who made this contest um, work um, and and uh, you know Bukola is here. Bukola should probably join me here. Uh, Bukola is our head of marketing. Should probably want to thank our sponsors. Uh, um, uh, you lesson uh, for what they did for making sure uh, this contest went on uh, uh, for the prize uh, to to RLG Communication. Uh, thank you very much. We saw. Um, everything you did, those beautiful tabs uh, uh, for this tournament and beyond. Obi Weezy, um, the laptops and all of that, that were prizes for these kids. It's, uh, it's just beautiful. I also want to say thank you, Sandra. This is beautiful. Thank you for the, thank you for the quality. Thank you for the ratings. Chop knuckle. <laughs> but most importantly, I want to say thank you to the audience, to all of you who continue to support us, Nigeria Info. Um, I was here the last time. Yes, it's almost were. like yesterday. Yeah? I know, yes. And, and I know I'm going, well, we are going to be back here again at some point later Thursday. in the year. Yes, in August. Um, so um, I, I just, I can't hide my excitement. I'd like to say uh, congratulations to everybody who participated, all the contests, and it was a marathon, not a sprint. Three weeks of rigor, three weeks of sacrifice, of, of, of dedication. My goodness, you guys, how do you know so much of politics at this tender age? It's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. But it's the kind of quality we've seen um, from contest after contest, and it's getting bigger and better. Uh, we look forward to seeing you, Esther, and how you perform in the Tournament of Champions. Is that it? Yes. The Tournament of Champions later yes. in the year and all those great names we've come to meet. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for being a part of it. And I cannot wait for the next round. Yes. So let's have the check, the one million naira check, so that we can present it to our winner. Esther, please stand up. Can the winner please stand up? Please stand up. Please, that, she's too young to get the, the reference. But come over here, over here. All right. Okay. So uh, unfortunately, you can do a lot of things, Sandra. <laughs> is it's not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, our prize uh, sponsor, U Lesson, is stuck in traffic in Victoria Island because of the rain. Um, but uh, they have said that we should hand the checks over to our winners on their behalf and um, that they will, of course, appreciate it. So please, let's get uh, the check for one million naira, please. Can we have it? It's right there. Can we get it? Can we get it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, it is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Well done. Thank you so much. We have one million naira from you lesson. Thank you so much again to you lesson for doing this. Uh, Madam Bukola, could you come this way, please? So that she's in the middle. So you represent you lesson. Lagos, we're still streaming live on Facebook. Facebook is Nigeria Info FM. YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. Esther, congratulations to you and well done. I love how Esther, whatever is happening, she's just like, oh my God. Very like emotionless on her face. So you can't tell, oh my God, is she happy? What's happening? <laughs> congratulations to you. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for the opportunity to meet you. You're really, really good at this. And I can't wait to see what you do at the Tournament of Champions. So you're going to be facing Ruth Okoracha. You're going to be facing Tamvita Kaushik and uh, Ramadan Olare Oladikupo. All right, we've got uh, a prize for our second place finisher as well because you are a finalist and so you are deserving of Nigeria Info's uh, generosity because, I mean, you came into our house. We can't let you go home just like that, you know? we got to say thank you for all of the things that you did did on this show you were giving us lectures every day so thank you so much thank you so much here's a check for five hundred thousand naira curtsy you lesson and nigeria info thank you so much for coming second for letting us experience you your story is so inspirational well done 
Okay, Lagos, I hope you're watching live. Facebook Nigeria Info 99.3, YouTube Nigeria Info FM. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili, your moderator. And we have a gift for the third place finisher. The third place finisher is uh, downstairs. We're going to have her quickly come up. Kowia Urola Salam, boss, let me tell you. Kowia was knocked out of the tournament completely. She was our number 17 seed. She was supposed to take the final spot and she was knocked out completely. And someone pulled out um, of the tournament because of a bereavement. So we had to look at the scores of the um, of the people who had been knocked out. And we're like, okay, well, who had the best score? And Kowia had the best score. And she came in and during the round of 16, she knocked out the number four seed. That's a wild card. Thing. I know. <laughs> I know. She knocked out the number, number four seed in the round of 16. And all of us sat up and like, okay. Okay, and then she won her uh, quarterfinal match, and then she got to the semifinals, and she was stopped by our number one seed, oh, Hamid Olarunwaju. <laughs> so we're giving Kowia Urola Salam 250,000 naira from U Lesson and Nigeria Info FM. We're also going to be giving her a speaker from obbeasy.com. Uh, Hamid gets a phone, by the way, from obbeasy.com. And then we also have a laptop. Uh, we have a laptop for uh, Esther from obbeasy.com. Oh, yes, you're also going to be getting coding lessons from obiwizi.com Hamid you'll also get coding lessons from obiwizi.com yes more homework yay <laughs> from you lesson I'm sorry not obiwizi.com from you lesson you're getting coding classes from uh, you lesson Esther gets intensive months of coding classes <laughs> from you, from you lesson coding Another school scary name Esther Bewaji I the know tournament for the tournament of champions I know she's one to look out for she's she's one of the ones to beat the champions are all ones to beat so I I'm expecting like fire in the studio. Every day we should come with an extinguisher. I'm waiting for the challenges. <laughs> I'm blowing things <laughs> off. Okay, so we're going to go downstairs and take a lot of fun pictures with the parents and the guardians and the friends and everybody. Thank you again to our judges. Thank you again, Lagos. I see you calling in, wanting to contribute, but not to worry. Tomorrow, 3 p.m., you and I will be right here talking about the day that we've just had. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili. This has been I Beg to Differ Debate Tournament on 99.3. Nigeria info, don't go away. Stay one step ahead with the latest news and trending Woo! conversations here on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Don't tell people, are you added weight? Why are you losing weight? Yeah. Eating. No, know, right? it's not your business. Yeah. Man, the pass is good. All right. Oh, yeah. 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 I pray to God that God is going to answer our prayer. Please, yeah. yeah. this is not all about prayer. It's not like it's not prayer. Yeah. prayer. Yeah. 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 Like Jeremy, yeah. 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 it's not finding happiness in your home. You pray. Your number one station for talk. Let's talk. They don't disconnect your line. Sick of saying you will not link your national identification number to your MTN number. Make you not worry. If you don't already collect your NIN and your number, you can just find it. Easy step on your next trip for next time. Plus, dial star 745 on your screen and just connect your local identity for your number. Easy step on your plan. Connect your number using my MTN and Ethernet number. Call 562 number.
99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info.